Hello everyone, thank you for being here. You found this video um, somehow linked to the first introductory lecture related to steel structures, right? That little quick introductory lecture about steel structures. Quick. Okay, so what we're going to do right now is try to figure out the orientation of structural elements as it would pertain to a somewhat mostly steel structure uh, and how to figure out which direction open web steel joists go in, girders go in, columns go in, okay? Uh, I've set up a grid line here. It may or may not match what you have for your first project in working drawings, uh, but it doesn't matter per se. It's the concept that works best, okay? In fact, there's a possibility that for your working drawings project, you might already have been given the orientation of your secondary structural elements. That is, open web steel joists or the repeating close beams that hold up the ceiling or the floor, it doesn't matter, but we'll figure it out together, okay? So here's the deal. We have a simple, let's call it uh, perpendicular grid line, north, south, and east, west grid lines. I've spaced these uh, along the north, south grid lines, A through F, at 7.6 meters or 7,600 millimeters. I've spaced the east, west grid lines, one, two, through, through four, at 7,600 millimeters, and this one at 6,000 millimeters, okay, or six meters. So here's the deal. First, you have to figure out which direction your secondary structural elements go. Those are the structural elements, so-called secondary, because if they were to collapse, only a small portion of your building would come down. Example, open web steel joists, right? We've talked about that. If one open web steel joist comes down, only that small portion of the floor or roof that it holds up comes down. It doesn't take a big portion of the floor or roof with it. Secondary structural element. If the girder holding up all the open web steel joists comes down, then a big portion of your building comes down, right? Because all the open web steel joists attached to that girder also come down. If a structural column comes down, then an even bigger portion of that floor or roof come down. Heck, if it's a column further down, it even takes up mo many of the stories above it. That's a primary structural element. So you always start off for simpler buildings with your secondary structural elements. In our case, open web steel joists holding up the floors or roofs. So what you would do is you would, identi you would identify which of the grid lines, east, west, or north, south, are spaced apart the furthest. Now for our purposes, these are all the same, 7.6 meters or 7,600 millimeters. These are almost all the same. These two are the same as that, but this one is smaller. So this one here is kind of the smaller one, and it's in these grid lines. So the east-west grid lines have the smaller dimension. That means that your secondary structural elements, open web steel joists holding up the floor or roof, must be parallel to the longer dimension the longer, or the wider, more widely spaced grid lines. Basically, that means that your open web steel joist, or whatever other structural element you're using to hold up the floor or roof, goes this way. Okay? So here's your open web steel joist. If that's what you're using as your secondary structural element. Okay? So your open web steel joists are going this way. Now, the nice thing about this, once you identify the secondary structural element, the ones that are close together to hold up typically a floor, a roof, you can also identify where the girders go. And remember, girders are primary structural elements. They're the ones that hold up other structural elements. So a girder is basically a beam that holds up other beams, or it's a beam that holds up open web steel joists or a girder truss is a truss or a joist that holds up other trusses or open web steel joists. 
That's why girders are deeper than the beams that go into it, or than the open web steel joists that go into it. Okay, now here's the cool thing. You ready? Once you know what direction the open web steel joists are going in, in this case, this way, east-west, the girders are perpendicular to that. Makes sense, right? If your open web steel joists are going this way, then they have to be held up by something perpendicular to it. So in our case, our girders, they always go along major grid lines. So our girder would be right here. Now, I'm using a pattern for my lines. Don't take that as the right pattern. I'm just using it to distinguish it using colors as well from other lines that I'm drawing. Okay? Now, where do the girders go? The girders go from column to column or from wall to wall or from wall to column, right? The girders have to be held up on something. So in our case, they go along the major grid lines perpendicular to the secondary structural elements and they go from column to column. Now, our columns, where do they go? They go at the intersection of grid lines. So our columns go here, 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 and so on and so forth. Why did I not point to any of these exterior grid lines? Because I believe that for your project one in working drawings, you're told that your exterior walls are load-bearing CMU. So that's load-bearing reinforced concrete, concrete blocks. Okay. So the outside is CMU, reinforced. The inside, your columns, are going to be steel. Now here's the thing. You've likely been told that your steel columns are going to be a W section. Remember what that is? We learned it into our introductory lecture. They're wide flanges. Basically, they're those steel beams that look like a capital I. Right? They kind of look like this. Right? A capital I with serifs at the top. And I'm just drawing it like this just to make it more obvious to you. Now the thing is, when you're putting these as columns, you can either orient them, put them in the ground looking like this, or looking like this. Right? Because it does make a difference. So either you can orient them down into the ground looking like this, or you can orient them down into the ground as columns looking like that. Big difference. So how do you pick where to put them like this? Let me help you with that. Because there is a good way to do it and a less good way to do it. If you figured out which direction your girders go in, because you could figure out where your open web steel joists go, then you can figure out what direction your columns will go in, if they're of this form. OK, you ready? If you have your girders going like this, then your columns will look like this. So from your orientation, they should look like a capital I, like this. OK? So that means that then your next girder goes here from column to column. And that means that this column then is oriented like a capital I, like this. And then that means that the next girder here goes down like that. OK? And it all starts with figuring out those secondary structural elements, the ones that are very close together to hold up the floor or roof. Okay? Now, how to connect these girders to those columns? How to connect these open web steel joists to those girders? Because you're probably going to have to show that, right? Then I'm going to give you a tip. Now, it's not a tip because it's not hidden. Okay? Go check out your textbook. That is Building Construction 3rd Edition, the one that you're using. 
for connections between your steel girders, W sections, and your steel column, W sections, check out chapter 19, figures 1910 to 1913. In fact, while you're at it, check out the whole chapter because lots of good stuff there, okay? For connections between open web steel joists and your beams, check out chapter 18. Specifically, check out figure 18.19E, but all of chapter 18 is good for that. In fact, that will help you with connecting your open web steel joist to your CMU walls. I might have even given you that image in the lecture that I posted for us, but go check it out because that's important, okay? Now, I think what we could do then is maybe take a break here. I'll upload this video. And then maybe we can talk a little bit about how to frame around stairway openings and how to go about then figuring out the depth of your beams, open web steel joists, and that sort of stuff, given a grid line like this. I have a feeling for your project one in working drawings, you were told what the dimension of these open web steel joists would be, what the dimensions of these girders and columns would be, right? But what if you didn't know? How would you approximate it? All right. I lied. I have one more thing I want to chat about. There's a chance that on this side of your building, perhaps your open web steel joists go in a different direction. For whatever reason, maybe your open web steel joists might go this way. <clears throat> right? For whatever good reason. Is that a problem? No, not really. By now, you're good with this. And that's because once you know the direction of the open web steel joist, then you know that the girders are perpendicular to that. Right? So that means the girders go here. And then your open web steel joists go here. And then your girder goes here, assuming this is not an exterior wall. And once you know your girders, then you also know the direction of your columns, how to install those in the ground for the interior columns. Because again, the exterior walls are load-bearing CMU, reinforced CMU. The problem comes when you start figuring out how to align columns and frame beams when you get these oriented open web steel joists going this way and the ones oriented this way. What happens to say a beam, a column like that? What happens there? That's a bit of a longer answer and that's probably better discussed live, maybe one-on-one -on -one or during our class time. Now, let's take a break and we'll come back and chat maybe a little bit about framing around stairways and approximating the depth of, say, open web steel joists or beams. See you shortly. Thank you for your time.